we see that, that this drug has the proclivity to cross the blood-brain barrier, it can elicit responses. Does that change the way that we manage patients who come in with, you know, they're treatment naive and they have de novo brain meds? I mean, what is our trigger to have those patients, if they are EGFR positive, given that we have this data, what's our uh, comfort level with starting osimertinib and not referring them to radiation therapy? Is there, is there uh, a, a, an, uh, some way that we can follow these patients carefully and just give them osimertinib, or do we need to send these patients to radiation therapy? I think definitely with, with the introduction of osimertinib and its great CNS activity, we have moved away from radiation whenever we can avoid it. Of course, there are patients who are highly symptomatic, and, and in those cases, sometimes radiation is necessary. But for many patients with small asymptomatic brain metastases, we have, will try to get them onto osimertinib as quickly as possible, do short-term follow-up to make sure that they are responding appropriately. But certainly, I think as a field, we're generally moving away from whole brain radiation yeah. therapy for these patients, and even targeted therapy. I think the other take-home is patients are living you know, a longer time than ever before. They're young patients. They really, they, they experience and notice this the side effects of radiation. And when you're, when you're living for years with those side effects, it can really become quite meaningful. So I, I try to avoid radiation and move to these CNS penetrant, penetrant drugs whenever possible. And I'm sure that's something we'll cover again in the, in the other sections as well yeah. with and other targets. The data on osimertinib supports mm -hmm. us because if you look at the FLORA study, the response rate, um, CNS response rate in osimertinib was 81% the complete response rate was 13%. So those are not the small numbers. And I think we all move away from just sending everybody to the radiation right away. As long as you follow that patient, I would not recommend not getting an MRI for four months after you start on osimertinib. But if you follow it very closely, I think it's very reasonable. I agree. I think as much as possible as you can spare whole brain radiation in these patients who are starting patients who may, who have three, four, five, and who knows now with new drugs coming in development to spare them the late effects uh, that could sometimes be devastating uh, years after getting whole brain radiation is really critical in these often young patients. Yeah, I would just say just to temper the enthusiasm because I'm on board with, I think, <laughs> what everyone is saying here. I think there are patients that may need whole brain yeah. up front yeah. who yeah. are heavily symptomatic yeah. with edema. Absolutely. Uh, where I, I may not feel comfortable mm -hmm. starting them on uh, mm -hmm. a, a TKI, but I think this builds on the story we've learned from erlotinib, uh, the first and second generation TKIs. These drugs do cross the blood-brain barrier. I think osimertinib ha has done a better job of that and certainly eliciting responses in the brain. And I have uh, felt more comfortable in, in asymptomatic brain mets um, uh, patients starting them on osimertinib and have been following them without having them uh, move to radiation. So yeah, I would add I do that in close collaboration with my radiation yeah. oncology colleagues. Yeah. So these are patients that I will refer early to radiation, even if I don't think they need radiation up front. I want to have radiation kind of following along and helping me to make that decision as to whether the response we're seeing is adequate, when to get the follow-up MRIs, those types of things. Yeah.